Okay, just going to do a little tutorial on the Harrison Alpha 600 group uh, CNC lathe because uh, there's not a lot of info out there. I've struggled when I bought my machine to find info on how to do some simple operations, uh, but it is quite simple. So we'll have a quick look at doing just a simple parallel turning job. I've just got some aluminium stock in a three jaw chuck. Uh, so first thing basically is we just want to take a fairly simple cut. So we just engage the spindle with this lever here and we can see our RPM, spindle RPM readout here. This is our spindle speed pot. So we can increase spindle speed, RPM accordingly. Take, we can move our wheels just like a traditional lathe. Now we can select on the screen the increments that our cross feed and side feed go in on each click of our hand wheels. So 10 is a fairly fine movement. And you can see this figure here changing one tenth per detent of the cross slide wheel. Anyway, we'll just take a small cut, which is fairly simple. We initiate this one here, the Z travel, and then flip this lever up, and you can see now our Z numbers changing, so we're on automatic feed. Stop that. Just back it up. Go into a taking a cut. So once again, auto feed up the lever. Taking a cut. So what we do from here is pretty simple. We're going to stop the auto feed again there. Kill the spindle. We now need to tell or teach the machine our x-axis just going to take a quick measure on the section we've cut or turned the vernier caliper uh, micrometer is a better idea I don't have one handy at the moment but. so take a read off of our vernier which is 19.8 millimeters so we've just turned to a dimension of 19.8 millimeters and you can see that our X dimension currently is 19.74 so there's a, uh, a disparity there and that'll be because I've had the tool, that tool bit out and I've put it back in at a, in a different position so we've got to recalibrate that. That's a simple exercise, X, just touch the X and it shows you basically it's telling you to measure which we already have and then we put in here 19.8 you can see that it's registered over here, 19.8. Enter. And so you can see now our X is on 19.8. So if we now tell the machine what diameter we want to make this, uh, this particular piece, it's, it already knows where 19.8 is and it will know where zero is from there. So now we need to set the Z zero. Let's fire up load again. I'm just going to manually turn. Then we turn the carriage back. And I take a very light facing cut. So 
mode, just taking a cut. So that's basically, we can set that as our Z axis zero. Okay, so we go Z, it's telling us to face off or measure to the end. 0, 0.0, and here, enter, and our Z is now 0. So our X and Z is ready to go. Now we'll go into a quick program. So it's this one here. Now we're already on operation 20. Um, because I've already sort of done this, but I'm going to modify it a little bit. Um, we then go in here. Now we need to tell it what our final or finished diameter is going to be, not depth of cut, what our finished diameter is going to be, which is X here. And for this instance, uh, we want to turn down to a dimension of 9.11 millimeters. So we touch X. 9.11 enter so it's going to turn it down to a dimension of 9.11 millimeters uh, up here T just stands for tool and we're calling this tool bit 1 F is feed rate um, and we can put in whatever feed rate we like uh, R is asking if we want a radius in here I'm not going to run a radius for this particular job and Z, this is an important one. So Z is the dimension from uh, where we've just faced off, how far we want to parallel turn it, and that'll be in a negative figure. So I want to turn this 20 millimeters from the face. So, and I've already done this, uh, I want to turn it for a length of 20 millimeters. So, but if we didn't have that in there, we just press Z, minus 20.0, Enter and you can make that number any number you like, obviously. Now, for automatic passes, we need to, or a box cycle, this one here, uh, and we need to tell it what dimension or what diameter we're starting at. Now, we're going to be starting at a diameter of, uh, it's actually less than 19.84 now because we've taken a light cut, but I'm going to leave it at that, that'll work. Um, X1, or starting diameter, as you can see here on the screen and all the instructions are kind of here they are they do take a little bit of working out though so starting diameter um, of our of our work before we start cutting is in there um, Z1 uh, we're not going to do a final cut we're just going straight off the bat so zero depth of cut I've got as uh, 0.2 of a mil uh, each time the machine does a pass and then comes back it'll go in the tool will go in for a 0.2 depth of cut, which of course is 0.4 of a mil off diameter each pass. Um, and that's all we need for a simple operation. So we will go OK. Now to get it to operate, it's simple. Get the spindle going. Now we do have another feed we can adjust the feed rate further with this dial here uh, I'm just going to leave it as it is and we press this one to engage the okay now we've got this dark uh, uh, highlighted section I guess it means that this is activated ready to go and when I pull this lever, the automatic feed lever, it should automatically start parallel turning this section to a length of 20 mil and a diameter of 9.11 millimeters.
you can watch what's happening here. So our current diameter on this cut is 18.64 mil. You can see the Z axis working its way to 20 millimeters and back to zero and so on. So at this stage here, pretty much can go and make a cup of tea and uh, come back when we're down to our 9.11 millimeters. What I sometimes do, uh, especially when you're cutting without coolant, is uh, just take another measurement on the diameter and make sure that the, our calibration is still right. Uh, and that may need a, a 0.1 or 0.2 adjustment now that the working piece is up to temperature. Otherwise you'll take too much off the diameter and when it cools, you'll be undersized. And the machine will just finish and turn itself off when we're down to diameter. There is another function in here that we can set up constant surface speed uh, and what happens with the constant surface speed is that each time the tool that goes in to take another, another depth cut uh, the spindle speed will increase which will keep the cutting surface speed consistent for the entire duration of the job.